Hey, what's going on YouTube? Thanks for tuning back into another video. We, as promised, are now working on the Integra again. Last video we left off, we were saying that we're gonna actually do some little modifications for safety and for calibrating the car to where it needs to be at its current level. Right behind me, you see some boxes. And the last time we were at the track, um, something very important was left up to us. Basically, we needed to do stuff like get a new jacket, uh, get new pants, and they also said a new pair of shoes. So I'm not sure exactly why the current ones that I had weren't working, but we need some new pair of shoes. I ordered a new one and uh, let's unbox that real quick. It's just gonna go ahead and get that opened up. And I wasn't sure what brand to go with, but these are pretty good pair of shoes. So we got a new pair of shoes right here. Uh, let's go put these on the car real quick. Typically, it matters a lot where you're gonna mount these pair of shoes because uh, especially with Hondas that are really heavy in the front and really light in the back, they want your center of gravity to be at a certain angle and a certain location. Okay. All right, get them nice and even. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much it. We got our new pair of shoes on. Ha! <laughs> got <he. laughs> All right, no, no, no. All reality, guys, obviously, we need a parachute. That's what we're going to be unboxing right now. We got these ordered up. We're going with a shroud unit and um, basically a weld-in DIY uh, tube kit. Our cage as of right now is uh still steel it's not chromoly or anything so it's a little heavier but it actually still performs very well especially for what we're doing so we went with the steel components for that weld-in kit and that's going to be welded to the rest of our cage um, i'm actually going to be taking the car for fabrication in the next couple days and um yeah without fur further ado let's go ahead and unbox this stuff and show you exactly what we have there's uh, kind of some misconceptions on how the Hondas need to break versus like how the rear wheel drive cars have to break. Um, so the sizing can get a little different. Some guys actually like to run a little smaller than what we have, uh, but with what we did some research in, this is gonna help in the long run, especially if we go faster in the future. So it's just the one and done. We're getting this parachute and uh, we can test it out, install it and go back to the track. All right, so these are our two main boxes. Uh, I think that this is the mounting uh, fab, actual uh, fabrication stuff like piping and whatnot or cage add-on so let me just go ahead and actually open this up real quick all right so yeah here is the shoot super gas black which is the color of what we got and let's finish open this up okay everything's wrapped up pretty nicely let's see we've got a few more things in here Okay, so here is the plate where the actual parachute's gonna sit. Right there. And I think that's all packing stuff. And there we go in all its beauty. We actually run Stroud on a couple of the cars here at the shop. Um, Mustang's right there. Also on, I think Jared's car has one as well. Or actually, no, I don't think his is a Stroud, but we've used these quite a bit in the past. Real Street really likes them. They work well. Okay, yeah, this right here is the parachute cable release kit. So this right here gets mounted onto the actual car. Um, you actually grab this to release the cable. Uh, this cable attaches to basically the loop that's right there. And uh, once you pull it, this uh, releases inside of the, the covered area, the sheath, and uh, then releases the parachute, allows it to push outwards. So that's how you control it, uh, just with a manual control. Some people do it to a button and uh, release it electronically with uh, hydraulic pressure. Some have a little bit different ways of mounting them, but that's how we're doing it on this car. Nice and simple. Um, actually, I'll show you guys on a, another parachute real quick what they use to attach these two grommets and keep this together. So for reference, this is Gio's car right here. You guys have seen it on the Real Street channel, obviously. Uh, very, very fast Supra. That's that cable that I was mentioning, also a Stroud unit. And once the cable is uh, pulled inside using that handle that we have inside, um, then this piece actually goes in and allows that whole assembly to open. Now, when you have something that sits around like this or you're going to the track where there's a lot of people, you typically put a little uh, clip or almost like a parachute chain is what they call it, and um, hold this from accidentally being bumped off. And you can see one of those on, I think, I think Brett's car has one on right now. Nope, Brett doesn't have it either. What the hell, Brett? 
can see that on Jared's car right here, which is just like a little safety for it. Um, you normally use this pin right there, and uh, it's kind of like a harder thing to pull off than just having the cable. Uh, so that's a really good idea to have. And uh, we actually have a couple different ones here in stock with a Real Street logo on them. So cool thing to keep in mind. I think I'm gonna put one of those on the car as well. Now, back onto our parachute, there's a couple different pieces. Um, obviously, just because this attaches to that plate right there, and this attaches to basically another part of the chassis, doesn't mean that that's where it's going to pull the car from. Um, let's go show you real quick on Brett's car again. That's under the cover. So it mounts onto this platform right here. That little backing plate holds it in place and basically lets the uh, parachute have a good deployment position. But where it's actually pulling from is down lower. Um, and you can see right here, that little uh, cable attaches to the car at a lower point, and then the actual parachute is gonna be dragging it from that lower point. If you were to put it higher, or if you were to put it a lot lower, then it would change how the car would slow down. And in some instances, if you have it too aggressive one way or the other, it could cost the rear of the car to lift, especially on our front wheel drive cars that are a lot lighter in the, in the back than it is on the front. So it's always a very, very important thing to keep in mind that uh, exact position and I'm not gonna tell you one way or another, just do your research and make sure that the fabricator that's doing it on your car is able to take that informed decision and not just kind of winging it. And that is exactly why I'm not installing it myself. As you guys know, I did all the fab work on my own car, uh, all the intercooler, the intercooler piping, the pipes, everything. Um, and I could probably get away with adding those bars onto the, the cage and uh, kind of figure it out, seeing how other people have it routed and um, go from there but i don't want to because if i mess up then that's my life on the line obviously and we want to be safe that being said we are going to be taking it to a fabricator it's actually about 10 15 minutes from here and he's actually going to be able to do the install or not he's done a lot of cars he's done a lot of installs um, on hondas in particular and um, it's something that he's felt very comfortable with and we're going to go with that just to make sure that there's no problems whatsoever as for where it's gonna get attached, these two rear bars are basically attached to the chassis and the rest of the cage. And more times than not, they'll do a center bar that attaches them together and then out that center bar right in the center to the back and then the parachute gets attached or tethered from there. Um, yes, my slicks are back here. They're just kind of chilling right now. So as always, you guys already know, whenever there is an event that comes up, I keep you guys in the loop. Uh, the last one we went to was Dream Fest. That was the main event that we went to for racing. We also went to Elite Tuner. I didn't announce that one too much on YouTube just because I didn't really have a lot of content to put on here at that time. But I did announce it on the Instagram page, Slow Integra, where I post almost daily updates on everything. Um, but for this one, we have about two months out. We're going to be going to H Day out of MIR, Maryland International Raceway, which is being held by uh, Javier. He does really cool events and um, we'll hopefully be there. Oh, we'll definitely be there um, September. No, excuse me. April 9th and 10th. So that should start. Uh, it's a Saturday and Sunday event. We should start getting more serious prep in these next couple weeks. The parachute was probably the biggest thing since obviously that needs to be fabricated, tested, and to get used to how the operation of it is and make sure that everything's all safe by the time we go there. A couple other things that we wanted to touch base on, just like we mentioned in the last video, the shifter. I'd really like to be able to source one of those before it's too late. It's impossible to get them right now, guys. You guys know the back orders are insane and um, we're just trying to see if somebody has one that we can get by with or uh, see if we can buy one used in the time being or whatever the case may be. Um, shifter, parachute, we need to work on seating position. Ideally, we'd like to get a Kirky, but uh, for now, we're gonna see if we can make the Sparko work, uh, get a little more forward and get rid of the center console because you guys saw fourth gear engagement with the lower shifter, the OEM one that I have right now. It's pretty difficult because I banged my elbow on it. Not very good. And um, yeah, there's little things that we have to do just like you guys have already heard me say and hopefully get the car to be nice and safe. Also need a new helmet, a new jacket and pants and racing shoes to qualify for all safety and make sure we're all safe at the event coming up. Uh, but luckily, like we said, there's two months out. We have plenty of time. Just take it one day at a time and get uh, nice and prepared for it. All right, so this is pretty much everything we have here. Stroud parachute, mounting bracket, the piping that we need to attach it all together, um, the parachute release cable and handle. The one thing, I'm not sure if I forgot to order it or if uh, I just have it in another one of the boxes, I gotta look into it. Um, the billet handle, so there's, it's still like not a billet piece, but they do a little adapter that sits over it and kind of sandwiches it into place. That way it's a little stronger. Um, 
I don't know where it is. So I'm going to look into it a little bit and uh, see if I can get that found, if not ordered. And we should be able to take this in for fabrication uh, maybe the next couple days, maybe on a Friday afternoon after work and make it back by sometime next week and take her out back, back to the track. Also, something I wanted to show you guys real quick. Last week, I posted a story um, on my Instagram. It's about an MR2 that we have here at the shop. And it's actually a pretty cool one. And a lot of people were asking. So let's take this time and check it out real quick. So this thing is pretty sweet. And obviously, you know, I have a soft spot for red cars. And yeah, there she is. A little K-Series build. What do we have here, Chris? Hey, Pablo. What's up? Oh, just trying to finish off some of the interior work on this. Uh, the engine is pretty much ready to go. We've got the uh, fuel system done. The uh, exhaust is done. The, most of the plumbing is done. We just mm -hmm. have to put some coolant in it. Uh, just finishing off some of the interior pieces. We're doing a AEM CD5 to go along with the uh, Series 2 ECU. So just finishing up some of the last minute details. I'm hoping that uh, by the end of the week we can have this thing running. So yeah. I'm excited to see it go. That'd be pretty sick. So for those of you who aren't too familiar with what this is, uh, this is an MR2, obviously, 90s car. Um, it has a K-Swap engine in it. And for some people, they think that that's actually turbo manifold. It's routed to a regular T3 flange and then back to regular piping. And it's kept as all motor just to have like that nice little flare in the engine bay. And who knows, if they want to go turbo in the future, they can go ahead and do that really easily. So got the nice amenities, Skunk 2 manifold, Hux Racing, a whole bunch of Hux Racing parts on here. And um, yeah, this thing is going to be a blast to drive. He's working on the horn stuff right now. And um, I'll show you guys in the future the AEM dash that he configured and has all that neat stuff going on. When do you think, uh, what do you think the aim of the car is going to be? Well, uh, for right now, my, my son, who's 17, he's been driving this car since he was 15. Uh, I don't want to make it too powerful yet. So this will be... Uh, double the power. We, we downloaded it with the 5 SFE and it made 110 horsepower at the wheels. Our target on this car is probably 220. So double the power, uh, cut a lot of weight off the car during this process. So um, really just go out and relearn how to drive the car and then uh, we'll get it down to OSW and see what kind of times they'll do. Man, let me tell you, doubling the horsepower on a car like this, rear wheel drive is going to be a ton of fun. I can't wait to see them rip it. It's going to be really sick. And uh, we'll not, we're not going to show you guys right now just because the car is on the ground. He's doing some stuff. But under the car, it has been meticulously cleaned. And Oh, I'm going to pick it up right now. Let's see it. Let me turn the flash on. Let's see. And this thing, for being such an old car, there was no expense or no time spared with this. Look how clean this car is underneath. Now you can even tell just from a quick glance, all the gold heat wrap that's been put into this, the AN fittings that were converted from the OEM coolant tubes, and this whole thing. Look at this, look at this amazing work. You wanna tell us real quick what it took to do all this stuff underneath? Yeah, so unfortunately with projects like this, as everyone knows, uh, you get into one rabbit hole, it leads to another. Uh, we started with powder coating all of the subframe and suspension components and then while I had the car at my house uh, I actually personally stripped all of the probably 10 or 15 pounds of seam seal uh, off the inside of the engine bay and uh, repainted it with the uh, uh, factory red uh, 3J6 and then I got into another rabbit hole of stripping the entire underside of the car and uh, doing a rubberized undercoating on it. So really, uh, probably about 200 hours worth of work. Um, took the, the fuel tank out, refurbished the fuel tank. All of the hard lines for the coolant have been uh, wet sanded with an 800 grit and then polished. Uh, as Pablo mentioned, we went with AN fittings, thanks to JFab. So there's a lot of really cool details that have uh, gone on with this car and I'm excited to get it out on the road and see what's gonna, see what it's gonna do. I don't know if you guys noticed, but just like you said, that's not clean and just OEM stuff underneath the car. This is completely cleaned and recoded. This is going to last another 30 years without skipping a beat. And oh my God, it's so meticulously built. You can see everything is, everything has been touched. Every single bolt has been turned. No cut corners or anything. This is insane. Man, but like I said, there's absolutely no corners cut on that car. I thought I did a pretty good job on my engine bay. I undercoated the front clip of the car, but he did literally the whole under of the car. So pretty sick. All right, guys. So let's fast forward about a week or so. Uh, parachute, as you guys already saw, it was in, unboxed and all. Right now we have the Integra on the little dolly outside. We're getting it pulled right now to 
uh, fabricator shop and he's gonna be able to get that installed. I also have, for the first time in like three years, the rear bumper in the bed of the truck. So as a lot of you guys know, iconically, we've already always had either a mismatch, mismatch color bumper from the rest of the car or no bumper at all. The last couple years, it's been no bumper. Uh, that being said, we are probably gonna have this installed with the bumper now. I know it's not anything crazy, but it's a little bit of a change to La Fea. And I mocked it up last night, or excuse me, early this morning, and man, I kinda miss having a bumper on there. It kinda completes the look. So um, we're almost there, we're about five, 10 minutes away. Gonna pull up there, unload the car, and then show you guys uh, you know, the whole process, or at least the beginning and uh, breakdown of what we think we're gonna do. Man. We were driving the Integra, we could have recreated that Fast and the Furious scene, that's all I'm saying. Dropping off now. Got the rear bumper back on. I'm about to put some nuts on it to hold it up. Right on there. All right, and she is dropped off. Just pulled her off to the side right now. Just gonna pull some cars out and then pull her on to uh, get the chute mounted. Uh, we went over exactly how we want it. We kind of want it, I'm not gonna get that right now, but we kind of wanted it like right past, uh, just a little bit above the license plate frame area. That way it can still be removed nice and easy and it'll still be safe for where we need it placed. Uh, he does a lot of Hondas and front wheel drive stuff, so he's pretty pretty well known on how he should really place the, the um, height. And um, he said he's gonna take care of that, no problem. So now back to Real Street, going to get to work because it is about 10 o'clock right now. I'm a little bit late for today, but the guys were okay with me coming out. So I really appreciate everyone over there helping uh, work through it because we need to be safe. We need the parachute. We need to make sure that everything's good. Uh, so we're gonna head to the shop right now. I'm gonna stop by, get a little cup of coffee real quick, ready for the day. And uh, he said it should be ready this afternoon. So that being said, we'll probably still pick it up uh, later this evening and take it right back. Um, should be ready for testing after that. All right, fast forward again. We are at home. Car is dropped off. Parachute stuff is done. Uh, we got something I'm gonna go over right here in just a second, but parachute is actually off the car, even though we just got it put on. Reason being, it's kind of long with uh, the car length already, and we had it done removable. So I'll go over that <clears throat> in just one second. Man, I just had a piece of chocolate. I'm almost choking over here. But um, I should have parked it in reverse because I could have the extra length like tucked up next to the air compressor and um, not have that much of an issue. Uh, let me show you guys the parachute in just one second, but while we're here in the garage, I wanna show you guys this car that I have in front of me. So this right here is our Honda Civic EG hatchback. Uh, this has been completely meticulously kept in great shape. The body's super straight, fresh repaint. Uh, our R8888s up front, uh, full interior, really clean, really clean. And, and, it's also a Type R engine. B18C5, light head work, uh, very, very simple stuff on pump gas, 226, just got dyno the other day. And this is, yes, our next giveaway car. So we actually went live on this a couple days ago. The Integra, the white Integra that we had mentioned has already been uh, finished. It's been shipped off to the owner. I'll put a photo of him right here. It's actually Jay from Washington. He actually just got that delivered a couple days ago. And we have this new gem for you guys to have a chance to win. That's my quick little cameo with this car onto this video. Obviously the subject of the video is the parachute install on the Integra and we have that done. So let's go ahead and show you the install uh, finished results on the Integra. So like I mentioned, the parachute is off. We had to make sure that it's a removable one. We still have the car here at home for 99% of its life. And we wanna make sure we have as much clearance as possible, especially in a small garage like this, only two car. We wanna make sure it was removable. Uh, that being said, we got it back and I took it off just now because we're gonna do a little bit of painting on it. And it doesn't look as great right now because it's off the car, but once it's painted and mounted back up, you'll actually see exactly how it's looking. So on the inside part of things, obviously you can see that was tied into our cage. TIG welded on the front, a little bit of MIG welding on the back just because of the access point. It's kind of hard to get a TIG torch in there. Um, obviously it's gusseted right there. And this is a hollow pipe right there that then allows the actual parachute to be added in on the inside and has that clip to hold it into its spot. Uh, along with that runs up the cable, which another bar was added right there and the actual handle was attached towards the front in a nice position where I'm able to comfortably uh, pull when needed. 
On the interior, we're gonna go ahead and simulate at the end of the pass right there. Boom, releases the cable, uh, which releases the parachute. Um, and then that just puts it back into position and then can be used to uh, put the cable back in once the parachute has been repacked. Uh, obviously, it's not doing anything now since the parachute is physically off. It's just moving the cable inside of that uh, black sleeve that you guys saw. The parachute end itself is this section right here. Uh, this is the tether that actually attaches to the main part and then uh, grabs onto the cage. Let's see. Right here, you can see it's the shroud. Um, actual parachute 410 and we have that safety clip right there just the real street para parachute tag to make sure that even if it's on the car with the cable nobody accidentally bumps into it and takes the cable off even if it's not using the handle and um, that's like a safety precaution really easy way to do it just to have that pin right there uh, so this right here is super easy we're gonna unbolt right here unbolt the flange right there actually remove the parachute from this bracket and prime and paint this parachute obviously we don't want to get this car that's super super nice all oversprayed so we're going to pull this out of the garage put it in the driveway uh just for right now give it a quick spray and let it uh dry overnight all right so i took the uh parachute off of the bracket and i actually had to undo it uh, i'm gonna look at some videos and repack it i have to practice that anyway uh, so there's a plate in there, the bolt goes through, and then a nut on the outside, which will sit on this side. So anyways, we have it off, nice and ready to go. Just going to clean this off real quick, hit it with some uh, degreaser, or um, excuse me, some acetone, and we should be good to paint it. I have two steps, basically, going to do it nice and easy on this. A little bit of Rust-Oleum primer, and some Rust-Oleum satin protective black enamel so some very very easy paint primer paint should be good gonna get my little tarp out uh, put it down and then uh, give it a nice little spray uh, same thing for the inside of the car man the primer looks so good on there nice and even that's just the first coat i'm gonna wait until that's dry even with the color before i even start painting the inside because i'm gonna use that same exact bed sheet uh, to cover the bottom of the floor and um, paint right there. We don't really care too much about the interior because we plan to put like quarter panels and stuff and even carpet back in the back, uh, but we still want to try to keep it as clean as possible, obviously. All right, paint is completely done on the removable part right there. Looks pretty good, drying right now. And paint is also done on the non-removable part. I got a little bit of overspray, cleaned it up just a tad, but you know, I'm super impatient with masking, so couldn't get it perfect. But it looks a lot cleaner, and it won't rust now. Um, so that's pretty much a win. I'm going to let this dry overnight, and then in the morning before heading to work, we can see how it turned out. All right, it's been about seven or eight hours. This should be pretty, pretty dry now. Not fully cured, but, you know, dry enough for me to handle it. I took it off from where it was drying last night and um, got it mounted right now. And you can see it looks pretty good. Super clean. The, the primer really made sure that the black one on there really effortlessly. And um, sleeves right into that section right there. And the pin just needs to go right there to locate it. And she would be all set with that. Obviously, this afternoon when I get home from work, I still need to pack the parachute and put it back on. But uh, yeah, she is a fully parachuted car now. This uh, cable um, sheathing we just need to go through this uh, slot right here i just need to pull this out and uh, take this little cap off that'll go there and then it loops around right there for the parachute and then uh for the release and whatnot so that's pretty much it on that end uh she's looking really good guys all right guys i'm about to wrap up this video for the day i am getting to real street right now i'm getting into work so i'm going to be uh doing that obviously um as for the video in general i mean we are officially parachuted we can now go over 150 legally at the track and can uh obviously stop safely once we we reach the end of the the trap um so yeah that's uh all said and done we're looking pretty good on that avenue also, as for the MR2 that we featured towards like the middle of the video, uh, Chris's MR2, that actually is pretty much summed up, like pretty much uh, finished up now. We actually took it out for a ride after that little clip, uh, I think the following day, and uh, man, pink rips. It's not even like fully tuned or anything, it's just on a base map, and he still has a few little amenities to do, like the seats, um, a little dash insert with like a custom display with an AM display, like really, really cool stuff. Uh, so he's definitely going to be ripping that with his son very soon. It's uh, like a father-son project. And then um, 
after that, they can, you know, enjoy it. They're almost done with it. As for the parachute, we're completely done. As for the EG hatch, we just started the giveaway on that. So there is, is still time to join if you guys are interested in that. I'll make sure to leave it down in the, the bio down below and uh, the comments as well. So yeah, that does sum up the video for today. Thank you everybody who stayed and watched it until the end. I know this was kind of a longer one without like any crazy pools or nothing, but it was still a little cool video because we were finally able to do what we've been looking to do for a while. Uh, that being said, if you guys haven't already subscribed, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the video or leave a dislike if you didn't like it. Be honest with us and um, let us know what you think in the comment section down below. We'll see you on the next one, guys. Peace.